What's up everyone? Welcome into another episode of Titans Tube. In this video, we're going to be breaking down the uh, what our thoughts on the recent hires of Dan Peace and Matt LaFleur as our defensive coordinator and offensive coordinator. Justin, it looks like um, you've replaced me already uh, in Nashville. Yeah. Who Who is, what, what is that? This, uh, this, is, uh, this is my cat. This is Robert Baratheon. Uh, good, good loyal cat. And uh, she may or may not stick around for the full episode. She kind of just does whatever, uh, whatever she wants. So Robert Baratheon is a, yes, <laughs> you know, it's yes. a girl cat. It's yeah, I mean right. I just thought it was a good name. Okay, it's, okay, let's just, let's just ignore that. Um, okay. Anyways, uh, before we get started, wanna wanna go over a few things. One, yes, my mustache is gone. I feel like I should mention that uh, the altitude took it away or something. Or I burned it off. Anyways, um, so sorry for the slow production of videos recently. Uh, we're I'm trying to get settled in in, in Denver, and we've kind of taken just a little break at the end of the year. But uh, we want to know your thoughts uh, on uh, what we should do and what we should cover. What kind of content you want us to produce during the off season? From what types of videos you want us to make to subjects to cover, like the Titans or more wider NFL subjects or other sports, mm -hmm. just anything. Suggestion and, box and, uh, is open. And, and, yes, and like format-wise too, like do you guys like this style of format with the the podcast and the boxes, or do you want to see some more, uh, or just in a different format and, and maybe, uh, I don't know, more, more scripted content and edited content. I don't know. We're, we're just leaving the options open, as yep. you said. Leave them in the comments. Uh, hit us uh, hit us up on Twitter with your suggestions. It's an open suggestion box. Uh, we want to keep on making videos uh, consistently through the off season until beginning until the beginning of next season. So uh, we'd love to hear some ideas on on what you guys think of you want us to cover and, and how we want us to do it. Also, huge shout out to all of our Patreons still. Uh, we appreciate the support keeping us going. Yes. Okay, let's get into the news now, Justin. Let's, let's uh, do after it. After everyone has been freaking out about how Vrabel is taking his sweet old time hiring coordinators, uh, we hire two pretty premier uh, coordinators, uh, Dan Peace. Uh, Peace. You, okay, got gotta, to gotta correct you again. Uh, his, his name is Dean Peace, Dean. not Dan. Did I Dean. say that already? Once? He's the dean. It might it might have just been a slip of the tongue, but you're forgiven. But he is Thank the you. dean of the defense. I am so sorry. I am. I apologize. He's brand new. I don't know him. He was retired. Why should I <laughs> remember his his what his first name is? Okay. Uh, anyways, Dean Peace uh, as the defensive coordinator, and then Matt Lafleur, which I feel like most people are happy about as yes. the offensive coordinator. Yes, so sir. I'm just what's what's your reaction? How do you like? this um these hirings. i i think this worked out very very well for us caleb i think yeah there's a lot of overreaction you know through this through this whole search and we're hiring we're hiring as like assistant coaches but they weren't actually our coordinators and it was supposedly taking a long time and people were starting to question can variable land anybody any any big maybe i don't know about big names but can he land any notable uh candidates out there and i think he ended up doing a really good job uh Dean Peace, I'm get, yeah, I'm going to have to start getting used to saying his name as well. Um, I, th I thought this was a fantastic hire. I think if you remember, I did say that I think uh, as we're seeing these coaches that are getting hired, there's a lot of young coaches, a lot of uh, coaches that are now, uh, they've been either elevated to positions that they haven't been elevated to before. Uh, they're kind of in uncharted territory, a lot of inexperience in their backgrounds. But I thought it was still important. I did say it was still important to try to have a coach that is a veteran and he's been there and done that. And I honestly, I think it's better to have that kind of guy on the defensive side of the ball, kind of an old school mind, uh, a veteran guy with presence on the defense. While on offense, you have the young innovator uh, trying new things and kind of more up to date with with the direction that the NFL is going. So I, I'm very thrilled with with Dean Peace, Coach Coach Peace, and the it, Dean. It is, it is whatever peace. he's. It's not. Called. It's not. Yeah, peace. You know, the other word for urinating. It sounds more yeah, like or, peace. or like green peas. Yeah, it's green like peas. peace. Peace out. Peace. But yeah, he's uh, he's definitely a proven commodity on this coaching staff now, and I I'm wondering exactly how. Uh, we talked him out of retirement. I know that his son, Matt Peace, is also going to be added to the coaching staff. He's probably just going to be kind of a, an assistant coach because I don't think he has any NFL background experience. 
Uh, but I, mean, I think getting paired up with his son def- was a factor for him. Is yeah. that not the definition of nepotism right there, basically? He's just getting the job purely because he's family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but maybe this is, a, this is a blessing. Maybe he's a, he's a brilliant mind, and he is an up-and-coming solid defensive coordinator. He just needed to get his foot in the door. True. Maybe. But, but as for uh, Peace, I mean, he's been New England's defensive coordinator, and he was their linebackers coach, I believe, in 2004 when they won a Super Bowl. And then he's been in Baltimore as a linebackers uh, coach and then got elevated to defensive coordinator and won a Super Bowl with Joe Flacco and company in Baltimore. So he's coached up some really good defenses. He has a really nice resume to reflect that. Um, so I, I like it. The, the one knock I have been seeing, especially from Ravens fans, because you got to be fair and throw in a criticism and a negative, is that he has a tendency to uh, struggle to hold leads late in the game, late in the fourth quarter. I've heard some Ravens fans saying that it was very frustrating to see lots of leads being given away at the end of games, albeit his scheme as a whole is pretty solid for a defensive coordinator. So hopefully we'll, we'll, we won't see that uh, become a trend with the Titans, but... Uh, overall, I, I like it. I, I think I think we got a good a good defensive coordinator, and honestly, I can't think of a better one we could have gotten. Maybe Jim Schwartz or something off the Eagles, but I, I think we got one of the best candidates that we could have gotten. I agree. I mean, I end think, end rant. Yes. yes, I mean it's another Patriot guy, so we're we're sticking with that theme so far with our yeah. hires. Uh, has has a background with the Patriots. Um, he won a Super Bowl. He has that veteran presence. I think that's the perfect hire we needed in the defensive coordinator to replace LeBeau. Um, just because mm-hmm. our, I mean our defense is on the upswing, where we're on an upward trajectory, and I think it's it's great to bring someone in uh, that's not drastically not going to be drastically different from LeBeau's type of leadership uh, to keep on carrying this defense. Uh, keep them improving basically into the upcoming season so I agree I I think it's a great hire I mean he wasn't even on our radars and uh, just kind of pulled him out of retirement Uh, I guess Rabel really does like own every room he goes in or phone call maybe (laughs) however he got Dan Peace out of retirement uh, he just walked into his house and said "Uh, hey um, I'm commanding this room now and you are now going to get off your couch and coach my defense and he was like okay He's like, I think that's yeah. how it went down. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So it's a great hire. Uh, also, big hire, Matt Lafleur coming from the Rams. Uh, what do you think? What do you think about this one? Yeah, lots, lots of excitement around this hire. I think this is this is the big one. I think lots of Titans fans were crossing their fingers for either Lafleur or now I can't even think of his name because he's no longer relevant. De, De, De Filippo from the Eagles, the up and coming coach from from the Eagles. And McDaniel's but, at first. And you McDaniels could, at you first. You could throw him in there, maybe. True. But it's it's kind of interesting because we did bring in LaFleur to hire him uh, or for an interview for the head coaching position, did we not? And then I don't know what happened. I guess later on, J Rob called him and was like, hey, Matt, what's up? So we uh, didn't hire you to be the head coach. We went with Vrabel. But if you still want to be our OC, you can come on down and do that. I yeah it's, it's I guess we followed up with him and was like so yeah head coaching position has been filled but if you're interested you can come over and call our plays and and you know run our offense and so however it went down I, I think this is a spectacular hire uh, he's got experience with Kyle Shanahan uh, he's been a co- quarterbacks coach for the Redskins and was the quarterbacks coach when RG three had his great rookie season. Uh, and who else? He, he was the yeah, QB was with coach. The Rams he was with, a QB coach at Atlanta when Ryan won his MVP. Yes. Yeah, with, with Atlanta. So he was paired with Kyle Shanahan there, and then he was paired with Sean McVay in the Rams' number one offense last year. So uh, hopefully, yeah, he's he's going to be a, an innovator and bring that kind of uh, bring that kind of diversity in the offense to uh, the Titans. And hopefully, he can, as Vrabel has said many times before, utilize our players' strengths and do them and. and utilize them to the to the best of their ability i mean let's, so, let's be honest i'm Any excited titans fan that even was like slightly upset that we went with vrabel as the head coach because we thought we would miss out on a candidate like lafleur or de filippo and then we still and then we end up getting lafleur as the offensive coordinator you have to be like rejoicing and just in disbelief because uh, i think yeah. a lot of people were ups- or the people that i saw that were upset with vrabel the vrabel hire were people who really wanted one of those young offensive minds like matt lafleur so they have to be just out of their minds excited that we still ended up getting him just as the offensive coordinator <laughs> yeah 
We, we got like two head coaches yeah, on based, this team now. I mean, he, he two interviewed the, yeah. uh, at the head coaching position at other teams too, not just with the Titans. So, yeah, um, I, I think he's going to be great. Um, he's going to be great. I think it's – I want to applaud Sean McVay too. Apparently, Sean McVay could have blocked – uh, this from even happening, like not allow the Titans to interview him or, or conduct a process or even hire him. And I heard, I, from the report I read, it said that Sean McVay let him do it because it was an upgrade for him since he will be calling plays in Tennessee and he wasn't the play caller in uh, Los Angeles, McVay was. So he wanted to like almost do that for his friend and companion, like yeah. let him let him further his career by taking a promotion instead of just like hogging him for for the Rams. So I thought that yeah. was cool. What, I, I what feel like guy. you don't see people do yeah. that uh, in the NFL a lot. Um, yeah, that, that's awesome. And, uh, you know, it kind of tells me, too, that I think LaFleur really likes this Titans offense and likes the opportunity, uh, you know, to, 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 to coach us because he could have been the offensive coordinator still for the Rams, but he chose to come over and uh, take this opportunity to be able to call plays himself. And, again, like you said, he was interviewed to be the head coaches of other teams and whether they couldn't come to an agreement or if the other teams just decided they were going to go in another direction. I think it still says a lot about LaFleur's uh, opinion about the Titans and the opportunity that is here because I, I think that had a lot to do with him wanting to come uh, to be our offensive coordinator because he probably had discussions with, with Sean McVay like, yeah, if you'll let me, I would love to go to the Titans and be an offensive coordinator and give me that – uh, yeah, give me give me that that job to call plays and really try to expand my talents. I mean, based on what Sean McVay did, I feel like Sean McVay might have even like pushed him to do that. Be like, hey, you should go <laughs> to the Titans as their coordinator get, get if you're not going to get one of these head coaching jobs because that is a great situation right there. J. Rob is building a dynasty right now. Uh, <laughs> yes. So yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I like. Uh, yeah. What were you about to say? No, I, well, not much. I, I was just going to say I like that. You know, we're, we are bringing in these coordinators and coaches that, except maybe not Dean Peace, he could be more of a placeholder defensive coordinator for either this year. He's probably probably going to be like a contract, a uh, a year to year contract basis kind of a coach, sort of how Dick LeBeau was. But bringing in Lafleur, there might be a risk if he just completely overperforms that he could be looking to, uh, you know, be a head coach on another team. Because uh, we saw that with uh, with Vrabel and how quickly he ascended after just one year for uh, as a coordinator for him. So I guess there is some risk in that. But uh, yeah, no, like you said, I think I think we knocked it out of the park with these with these hires. I mean, he doesn't even really have to overachieve. I mean, if he was a head coaching candidate this year for teams, I mean, for us, and then even if the offense improves, uh, say if they they go back to their form they were two seasons ago, where Mario to, uh, have, was having the great year before the injury. I think even if the offense gets back to that level, which was pretty good not like elite level. If it gets back to that, I think he's going to be another hot head coaching candidate after this next season, just because he already was before the season. Yeah. Now he's taken another offense and, and uh, improved it just by in one year. So yeah, I agree. That's a risk, but I mean, you, you do that in the NFL. It happens all the time. You can't just not hire a great coordinator because you might lose him in a year or two, you know? Yeah. And then good for him yeah, if he goes on. True. If he goes on to be a head coach, it means he did the job here. It means our offense was great, and and he did a great job. It would just, so. it would just, yeah, it would just sting for for Mariota especially because he has changed coaches a whole lot. But hopefully we won't. If if Lafleur comes in and performs well, then we will retain that kind of a scheme for the next year. But we're we're getting too far. Ahead. I'm getting too far ahead of us in the, in the future yeah, here. Yeah, true. Uh, but yeah, great, great, uh, great hire. Uh, I guess if, if there is a risk, there is still some uncertainty, not with just Lafleur, but the whole coaching staff, just from the inexperience, hasn't been a, a full-time play caller for a team yet, so that is still remains to be seen. But all, all signs point to uh, to this being the right guy, not only for Marcus Mariota, but yeah, for, for the entire offense. I mean, you got a rookie head I think coach. This is now, the change that we wanted. Rookie to see. head coach, a rookie play caller. Uh, a guy you just pulled out of retirement for the defensive coordinator. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it seems like a kind of a ragtag bunch of coaches just assembled, but this is the the Avenger team that J. Rob has assembled. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I mean, th this is just the first year. This this may not be J. Rob's and even Mike Mike Vrabel's uh, dream staff. Yeah. I mean, it, it's probably going to take a couple years to get every single coach in place that we want to. Uh, but I think this is a great start. Well, I think I think I mean, great, great it was more Johnny. about head coach uh, 
to John Robinson anyways. I, we, I know we talked enough about Vrabel in our coaching video when he was hired, but I mean, look, once again, if we're trying to, you know, you hear all, all the talk about the teams are trying to build the Patriot way. And it does seem like we're trying to do that with all the people who we, who have a history with the Patriots in their background being hired for the Titans. Yeah. But uh, I was just saying that the, you know, the, the block, the constant and new new England has been Bill Belichick. And I think that's why Vrabel was hired as the head coach, as opposed to like someone like LaFleur. He saw, I think J Rob saw something in Vrabel where Vrabel could be that guy, like a Belichick, a long lasting tenure where he knows that coordinator jobs and assistant positions are going to come and go with the ebb and flow of how, uh, how the team goes. But uh, if he gets that, that head coach in place, that, that constant, he can, he can start to build something great, especially with a great young quarterback like Mariota. So, Oh, Once yeah. again, Good I'm point. high on the Vrabel hire. Sure. So I, I because I'm high on J Rob. Yeah, it's it's a trickle down trickle. effect. If you're trickle. high on J Rob, you're high on everything that happens. This is all also Colorado, so that him. is one of my favorite words to use. I'll just throw that out. What is what's what's the word? Don't worry about it. Uh, uh, oh, I'll just watch the video. Yeah, yeah okay. just watch the video. Anyway, any closing thoughts on this? I think it's fantastic. I think I think Titans fans couldn't have asked for anything more. Um, uh, out of I mean, everyone was worried about the offense after the coaching st- after Malarkey was fired and Terry Robisky was gone. It's like, how are we going to prove? How are we going to get? How are we going to get Mariota? career back on track and they wanted a guy like a floor de filippo mcdaniels they got one at the coordinator and uh, a solid tough nosed uh, leader of men at the head coaching job and a, and a great Hey-o. defensive coordinator so that yeah. that that's what's up titans that's what's up that's awesome that's great that i i think there's a lot of reasons to be excited yes but yeah, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not sure how uh, how in depth we can get in discussing these guys because, as we've said, there's a lot of uncertainty, and a lot of it is going to be a uh, let's wait and see. This is the first year for this this new regime, so uh, August cannot get here fast enough. Amen. But there's a lot there's a lot a lot to happen between that too with the draft and free agency, yada yada yada. But but I'm to excited. That. Bring bring on the Super Amen Bowl. Amen to that. Uh, for next year, not this year. Who cares about <laughs> Eagles, Patriots? I'm ready for a Titans yes. Super Bowl next year. Okay, well, that'll wrap it up. Uh, thanks yeah. for watching. Let us know your thoughts below. Also, like I mentioned in the intro of the video, let us know your suggestions for the channel, for us uh, during this offseason, what content you want to see, what video topics you want us to cover, and the format, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Peace out. Tighten up. Can't wait for next year. See ya. Fireballs. Blowing up the league.